XCOM to me is probably one of the most effective and terrifying horror games out there. You really feel the stress. You really feel the tension. And the fact of the matter is, you don't know what's lying just around that corner. But over the years, alternatives have sprung up to challenge for this crown. Now the question is, is it still the ruler of the roost or not? Okay, so full disclosure, this video isn't going to be very formal. It's going to be mostly informal. I'm going to do it less with a script and less with bullet points and just sort of just speaking it from the heart of what I like about this game, what I like about this franchise, and then hopefully I can help you figure out whether or not you want to get this game. So not only am I going to be reviewing XCOM, the original XCOM, but I'm also going to be reviewing the greatest mod for XCOM, arguably so, Open XCOM. Now you can get a great idea of where to get Open XCOM from. Basically down in the description of this video, I shall leave a link to the page there. Uh, and if you have any questions, I think there's a few videos also linked in the description that will help you get started in your journey in installing this onto your computer. As to find where, where to find XCOM, well, Steam is probably the best bet. All right, how do I describe or categorize XCOM? Here's the best way. It's part tactical game, part strategy game, part RPG, part simulation, part horror game, all combined into one huge game that doesn't feel tacked on, that doesn't feel like one part gets favored over the other, and it all sort of works in tandem with each other to create a very fulfilling an interesting experience and probably one of the best games I've ever played so uh, we got that part out of the way let's begin with the proper review despite the graphics being from the 90s the various colors they use and the various ways they use the graphics and a little bit of an open XCOM giving everyone different uh, facial styles and haircuts that are different from guile like if you play it without open XCOM, you're going to have to play with everyone having a guy all haircut. It's going to be a little bit weird. Uh, you're also going to have some uh, mostly uh, blonde and cami haircuts as well from uh, Street Fighter, if you haven't noticed uh, in a regular game. But uh, open XCOM fixed that a little bit. Now, to be fair, I do think they were planning. I did hear a few times they were planning to put that stuff in the game, but they ran out of time. So, Open XCOM sort of finishes it a little bit for them, and I like that. It's, it's it might not be as up to date in graphics as the other stuff, but it still has the colors. It still has the uh, nice fluid animations when they do things. Uh, it, it it it's good enough for me to say that the graphics are serviceable and acceptable. Almost to the point of they might actually be better than some other games that have a little bit of a bigger budget when it comes to graphics and do a better job of, well, using 3D modeling. But honestly, XCOM sprites, they look still good even today. But what's really interesting is the moment to moment storytelling. I'll get to that in a minute. But first, the story of the game is this. You are here stopping an alien invasion that is going poorly for the Earth side. Like they're losing multiple battles. And then they just sort of all pull together to do one all out attack, or should I say defense, against the alien assault. And that takes the form of the XCOM project, which you are the head of. You are given a ton of resources and complete autonomy as well. Meaning the governments will not bother you while you defend the earth by whichever means you can but they will pull out of the project if you do poorly against the aliens more on that later basically this entire story is kind of a b-movie plot but to me the main story of this game 
is with your soldiers. They survive battles, they try to get better at shooting, at throwing grenades, etc, etc. And as a result, you take these pathetic band of rookies and turn them into skilled fighters who are pretty much incredibly tough. They'll still die, though. They'll still die if they are shot or uh, torn to pieces by the horrors that lay within each UFO. But, with the proper training, proper armor, proper weapons, they can give you a great chance to win this war. And you will have stories about what they've done in each battle for years to come. Like, one of my favorites is when a grenade fell at the feet of one of my soldiers. And it blew up and nobody died because we were wearing, like, the thickest armor and it was on the lower difficulty. But they survived a grenade to the face. That was impressive. Uh, then there was another time the soldier got shot multiple times and kept fighting in the battle. It was crazy. Then there was other times where a soldier would uh, save literally the entire mission by themselves or something like that. There's a lot of stories that other XCOM players can tell you. And uh, quite frankly... They're very fascinating. So the main story in this game isn't what's on the tin. It's what you, the player, and the game's AI make of it. It's a lot of fun. I think you will enjoy that. This game has two modes of play, a strategic layer and a tactical layer. On the strategic layer, you do things like build bases, acquire new equipment, either through research or purchasing it, and then constructing it after doing the research. You just buy it from the market. Those are basic equipment that you have access to throughout the, throughout the entire game. The downside to that is they're very weak. It's the weakest form of equipment, uh, very basic, but in a pinch, it'll do you to shoot down basic UFOs, you would have to get an interceptor. Interceptors armed with avalanche missiles or cannons. They will take down most of the early UFOs. The later ones, definitely not. But as the game goes on, the invasion ramps up. You start getting bigger ships. You start seeing more alien activity. A lot of things start to get all off the rails. Member nations leave the council, shrinking your funds. Also, you'll get more funds, depends how well you defended the other remaining nations within the council. And there's no way to get them back unless they leave, so be careful. And also, there's alien bases that you have to deal with. There's a lot of push and pull with the strategic layer, and I appreciate that. There's no simple solution to any of the problems. You either have to take care of it in a tactical mission, or you just lay it there on, on the map. If it's a crashed or landed UFO, then... It'll go away eventually. But a base is stuck there until you deal with it. Now let's move on to the tactical layer. In the tactical layer, you basically move your troops using something called TUs. TUs stands for time units. It takes a certain amount of TUs to shoot a gun in a certain way. For auto shot, it's a quick shot without your like aiming. Then there's aim shot that takes a lot of TUs, of course, because you're setting up an aim, uh, then there's auto fire where you're just shooting multiple shots and so on and so forth. There's a throw, so you throw your weapons. There's a lot of things you can do with the TU system, like you take a knee and brace for a better shot or you run out the room in case you're being shot at. There's totally a sense of, of flexibility in that, in the gameplay when you use it, the TU system. Now, as for the comparison to XCOM of the Firaxis variety, uh, Firaxis is a much more simpler system. You get two ability, two movements per turn. If you move twice, then that's it for your turn. If you move and shoot, then that's your turn as well. If you shoot, then that is also your turn. So it's much more simpler with the Firaxis version, but here it has a great deal more complexity great deal more depth to it so there's more you can do like you can throw a grenade you can set that grenade to go off after a certain uh, time and go up 
Now, if you've played turn-based systems before, you're probably thinking, okay, so how does the turns work? Well, it goes like this. Your turn goes first, then the aliens go after you. You go again, then they go again. After they're done, you go again, and then they go again. It's a very simplistic, yet complex system that is done impressively well. But then again, this is an era of experimentation and wonder. So it's not too surprising that a lot of things got shifted around or even enhanced due to the years of, um, let's just say, experimentation. So this is probably one of the more unique and interesting experiments that I think was a resounding success because it spawned sequels, it spawned a new franchise, it spawned a genre, uh, and it spawned, uh, and it spawned a diehard fandom. It spawned a new franchise. It was a huge thing for the time. It's still a huge thing nowadays, and I think it will be a huge thing into the future. So let's move on to the idea that I consider this a horror game. This is considered a horror game because every so often you'll get a night mission. And those are probably one of the worst missions you get. Because while your vision is impaired, the alien's vision is perfectly fine. You can get flares and other ways to light up the path so you can see it easier. But for the most part, you'll be fighting in the dark. And they can see you clearly. So every so often you'll get shot out of nowhere, not knowing where it took place or what's happening. Sometimes a grenade will fall at your feet. You'll be freaking out, like, where did that grenade go from? And this goes off. Now, let's talk about the terror missions, where you will meet everyone's favorite alien, the chrysalid. Oh, the chrysalid. I don't want to spoil too much for you if you haven't played this yourselves, but the chrysalid will be a lot of fun for you. You'll have a lot of fun with the chrysalid. Enjoy. Enjoy the horrors of the chrysalid. It can be a very scary game to many people. I've heard some stories of people just saying, like, yeah, I touched down in a mission. I just immediately evac because I just couldn't handle the stress. It's like, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's one of those games. But it's also a ton of fun. It's something you have to experience for yourself. And you probably think, well, it's going to be boring. Like, no, 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 trust me. You will never be bored with XCOM. XCOM will keep you fascinated and fighting for your life. Like, turn-based tactical games, I didn't think I was going to be into those. And then I played XCOM and I realized, yeah, I'm going to be into this. I do like the newest stuff. I do enjoy it. But at the same time, there's something so special about XCOM. It's, it's hard to describe it unless you've played it. It's like it has a certain uh, je ne sais quoi, if you will. It has a certain charm that goes beyond what uh, the basic code seems like. It like this screens I showed you in this game, all about this game, in this video, I haven't been like stellar or wondrous, but at the same time, it's infinitely more fascinating than a lot of games that are coming out this year or in years past. It has a signature all on its own. Does it have bugs? Yes, it has a few bugs uh, with the open XCOM form. Uh, I, sometimes I open a window and it's two versions of the game is playing and one version saved and the other one didn't. Um, but for the most part, most bugs aren't really an issue for this game. Man. I think you should give it a shot even without open XCOM. It's still pretty good. There's a great number of mods that can be used in this game, like there's a 40k Warhammer mod, uh, there's a pirate mod, I think that I saw or remember seeing a, um, an XCOM UFO files or something like that, XCOM files, and basically you start as a fledgling XCOM organization and you build your way up to being able to defend against a, well basically where UFO defense starts, I think that's an interesting one, I was excited for that. And also, there's some mods that come with Open XCOM as well, like sort of side mods, like the ability for aliens to pick up weapons on battlefields. Um, 
Also, the ability to use guns as melee weapons. You can hit people and boom, boom, boom. Um, and uh, there's, a, there's a number of other ones in there as well. I suggest you take a look at it. It's a pretty impressive list of things you can do. They're not too impressive like a, a whole new set of mods or something like that. Like the full Warhammer 40k mod set or something like that. No. It's got a number of interesting wrinkles and additions to it over the years. I still think they do updates of it for it every so often, so don't be surprised if you get hit with a few updates here and there on it. Overall, I think the modding scene for this game is pretty good, and that's not too surprising because, let's be honest, it's been out for a few years now. <laughs> well, more than a few years, a few decades now, so it's got a pretty big mod scene. Okay, one last thing. This is a very important thing, probably the most important thing. Thank you for stopping by. I appreciate it. I'll catch you guys in the next one. Also, that subscribe button, if you haven't pushed it already, you want to see more content like this, then go ahead and push it. And I'll see you in the next one. Take care.